So I was told to make this video on the Gobella Servo Programmer. And I was going to make this video like a little bit funny, you know, just to drill it into those people's minds. But uh, there's one slight issue. I'm not funny. <laughs> The Gobilda Servo Programmer is a product sold by Gobilda to allow FTC teams to control their servos without writing a program. The official Gobilda website states the following. The Dual Mode Servo Programmer allows you to unlock the full potential of the 2000 series Dual Mode Servo. With this programmer, you can easily switch the servo between the default mode and continuous In the default mode, the servo is this able programmer to also doubles as a servo degrees tester. And this mode is excellent feedback. for application requiring mode, the servo and will operate like a gear this mode is excellent for driving speed and 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 Still be a no roll servo signal. But what does that mean? That means you're getting this little piece of circuit board and this battery tray without the batteries. But at least it's cheap, right? It's ten dollars. So how does it work? Well, to understand that question, we'll have to go all the way back to the beginning. That's right. I'm talking the signal. AWM! Pulse width modulation is a type of signal used to control servos. This method uses three wires. The red and black wires supply DC power to the servo, while the third wire, the signal wire, carries a series of pulses to the servo, which get decoded into a specific position that the servo turns to. But how does it work? Ha! How does it work? Uh, I actually don't know, because SFV has been too busy making me study useless stuff like math and physics instead of say useful stuff like control protocols uh so i've left a link in the description below so that you nerds could probably check it out if you want to but uh it's not going to be anything ftc related uh let's move on so let's look at the board there are four buttons on the bottom half of the board a switch on the top left corner and two of those three pin connectors on the top right to provide the board with power we connect the battery tray onto one of those two connectors, making sure the red wire is on the plus pin and the black wire is on the minus pin. The servo programmer will notify you that it has been powered by giving you a minor jump scare to prepare you for the horrors that's about to come. Then, connect your servo to the other connector, making sure not to connect the pins in the opposite way. Now if you press on the button labeled S, your servo should react in one of two ways. If your servo sweeps back and forth at a constant speed, your servo is in servo mode. This means whenever you want it to move, it will always move to that exact position, with the downside of it only having a set range of rotation available. But if your servo starts moving in a uniform change in velocity, you have a continuous rotation servo, or something I like to call the servo imposter. If you press the S button a second time, the servo programmer will become a controller, allowing you to position the servo for building convenience. The left and right buttons send the servo rotating either to their maximum allowed position on that side, or make it spin continuously depending on which mode your servo is on. The middle P button moves the servo to the middle position similar to when you enter 0.5 as the position value in your code. To turn off your servo programmer, simply press the S button again. Remember to unplug your battery, because those boards tend to get haunted after being off. If you have a GoBuilda Smart Servo, you'll be able to change its operating mode by adjusting the switch and holding down the button labeled P for about 5 seconds. Then, the board will have a small seizure to indicate that the operating mode has been set. But wait, if this board is making the servos move, this can only mean one thing. This little board is just sending a PWM signal to the servos. And with so many components using a PWM signal, you can use this on any of those components provided they have their power connected. Here, I'm connecting a board to the Rev Spark Mini motor controller, and as you can see, the motor just behaves like a CR servo. You don't even have to use this on FTC electronics either. Here, I'm using a GM6020 motor I'm planning to use in our RoboMaster competition, and it kinda works. The issue here is that not all devices agree on the same parameters. Remember this pick? Well, if the motor manufacturer decides to use a smaller range of signal values, the motor will behave weirdly when the signal is out of this range. And if we look up the range of the GM6020 and the range of Gobella Smart Servos, you will see that there is a 500 microsecond difference. 
I also happen to have this M3508 motor nearby which looks kind of like an FTC motor, so let's see how well it works. As you could probably tell, that was not a good idea. This is because a motor like this is really powerful and can carry up to 3 newton meters of torque. Big torque equals big recoil, and with the motor not being secured in place, it flies out of control and I start crying. But why did the servos or the last motor not encounter the same problem? Well, there are two key differences. First, they were not spinning at the speed of light. Less velocity means less sudden acceleration and results in less recoil. But more importantly, none of those motors are powerful enough to generate such a huge recoil. The GM6020 has 1.2 Nm of torque and the Gobel torque servo only carries 0.25 Nm. This is why we generally use motors on high torque or high speed applications such as on robot drivetrains and servos on applications that don't require so much power. Hi, uh, this is the end of the video. Uh, I couldn't really figure out what to put here. So I decided to turn on my camera. You might notice I'm in my pajamas, and uh, this is because I've been playing this video since I woke up, and it's it's like it's it's 2 p.m. I haven't eaten lunch yet. I'm so yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you uh, in three years when I finally get to start my robotics club as a few. Goodbye. It's doing the little beep thing. Wait, let me, let me, okay, how do I? Ah!